Once upon a time in Turkey, there lived a funny little wise man named Nasrettin Hoka. He wore a huge white turban and a worn-out coat made of patches upon patches. Riding about on his little grey donkey, he liked to help whomever he could. One day, Nasrettin Hoka heard a great commotion inside the caravansary, a hostel for travellers. A frisky goat had gotten loose inside the kitchen. Kicking and prancing, she was breaking all the dishes, knocking over pots and pans, and spilling all the cooking oil. The cook was screaming, and a few travellers were slipping in the oil as they tried to catch the goat. Because he loved goats so much, Nasrettin always carried a sweet apple in his pocket for them. He quickly took out the apple and cut it into little pieces. He lined up the pieces so as the little goat nibbled to the last piece, Nasrettin was able to catch her. Gently, Nasrettin put the little goat back into a pen and everyone cheered. The caravansary owner invited Nasrettin to eat with the other travellers, but Nasrettin declined as he was on his way to a banquet at the home of a rich friend. Nasrettin trotted off, waving to all unhappy to have helped. He was so late now that he realised he would not have time to change his coat, which is not only worn out with patches upon patches, but also oily, dirty and smelling of goat. When Nasrettin's friend opened the door to Nasrettin, he was shocked. He was afraid his other guests would laugh at him for being friends with such a shabby, smelly man. Nasrettin simply jumped off his donkey, hugged his friend and joined the banquet. He was so happy to be among friends that for a while he didn't notice something very strange. No one was facing him. All the guests had turned their backs toward Nasrettin, and when the servants brought dinner into the room, the food was served to everyone but him. Before long, Nasrettin was left sitting alone with nothing at all to eat. Several times he tried to start a conversation by yelling to a guest at the opposite side of the room, but no one listened, and no one responded. Nasrettin looked thoughtfully at his friends. Each one was scrubbed until he glistened. Each one was wearing his best coat. Then Nasrettin looked down at his own coat, worn out with patches upon patches, oily, dirty, and smelling of goat. Very quietly, Nasrettin slipped out the door. He mounted his little donkey and began trotting home when he had an idea. At home, Nasrettin jumped into a tub of hot water, poured in a whole jar of perfumed soap crystals, and scrubbed himself under the glistened, and the whole room was filled with bubbles. Nasrettin dried and powdered himself. Then he put on new shoes with tasseled toes, a magnificent new turban with sparkling jewels, and a fine new coat of shining silk with golden threads. Nasrettin preened himself before a mirror. Never had he been so completely well dressed. Never had anyone worn a coat like this one. How fine he looked. Nasrettin strutted out of his house. Everyone nodded respectfully as he swaggered along the street, heading back to his rich friend's home. A servant ushered Nasrettin into the banquet hall, and his smiling host immediately served him food and drink. Everyone smiled and nodded at Nasrettin. What a fine figure he made! What a fine coat! Nasrettin was the most popular man at the banquet. Nasrettin picked up the choicest grilled lamb chop, but instead of putting it in his mouth, Nasrettin put it inside his coat. Eat, coat! Eat! said Nasrettin. Nasrettin picked up fish, fried in vine leaves and roasted eggplant. Opening his coat, he said, Eat, coat! Eat! Nasrettin scooped up pilaf, raisins, and pistachio nuts. Opening his coat, he said, Eat, coat! Eat! Burnt squash stuffed with hash and olives went into the coat. Eat, coat! Eat! Slices of chicken breast stewed in rose water, sugar cakes, flavoured jellies, sherbet, sticky baklava, pomegranates, 
persimmons, oranges, apples, figs and dates. All of this food Nasrati stuck into his bulging coat, shouting, Eat, coat, eat! Finally, Nasruddin opened his coat once more and poured a whole bottle of wine inside. Then closing his coat as best as he could, Nasruddin patted his belly and smiled at his host. All the guests were amazed. What was Nasruddin doing? At last, the alarmed host said, Tell me, my old friend, why are you feeding your coat? Surely you wanted my coat to eat, Nasruddin replied. When I first arrived, in my old coat made of patches upon patches, there was no food for me. Yet when I came back in this new coat, there was every kind of food for me. This shows it was the coat, and not me, that you invited to your banquet. Remember this, my friends, said Nasruddin Hoka. If you want to look deeply, look at the man and not at his coat. You can change the coat, but you cannot change the man. A coat may be fine, but a coat does not make a man. Outside, a man may wear a sheepskin, but inside, he may wear the heart of a wolf. Manny, a good man, may be found under a shabby coat. With coats, new are the best, but with friends, old are the best. Everyone cheered. The wisdom of Nasruddin Hoka calls for celebration exclaimed the host. Music and fireworks resounded and everyone danced under the stars of heaven. He who wears heaven in his heart is always well dressed.